a <laughs> massive open mic night. That's a really, really, really great expression. I don't know if you made it up, but I would I act as if you did. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. I would act like you did. That's so good. <laughs> I would. But if you haven't yet figured out all the things you have to be thankful for, watch this next story. Mark Goffney was born without arms. And during the eight years he has attended telethons, he has raised over $6 million for other handicapped children. Oh, we win. We won. I grew up in America as a poster child for disability. I started playing guitar with my toes and created my own identity through music. I decided to get inspiration for my new album by meeting young British artists who are also shaping their lives through music. In this episode, Leah McFall explains how TV talent shows aren't always the answer. Obviously, we all know that you're famous from, from being on The Voice. I don't know if I'm famous. I think I would say, like, if there's, like, in probably Z-list celebrity. <laughs> just, no. like, just, some people know us, but, you know, like... You have to see it as a massive open mic night. You can't you can't get caught up in the competition side of it because mm. that's TV. You need to understand that your you know your role is to be able to put your music out there and see how people are reacting to the way you translate a song, which is hard as well because you can't sing the songs that you wrote. You have to sing covers because basically you're trying to pick up a demand that you can later sell to. I was basically advised, you know, record companies don't really know whether or not we like your voice. Mm. So mm. we need to see you on a platform where the nation can see you and see what way they react to you because your voice is a bit like Marmite. Basically you either love it or you hate it. I gotcha. So yeah, I mean to me it tastes like earwax. What does <laughs> it taste like to you? I, t I told my girlfriend this morning, uh, bacon grease, spreadable right. bacon grease. Okay, yeah. cool, yeah. I mean not that I sit and you know, have ever really tasted earwax. That's how I would imagine earwax to taste like. Now that Marmite. you've said that, I think I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I think the Marmite company might sue me. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Some, some people, people love, love it. it. It's great. Ah, some people love it. <laughs> From the voice, you, you did get signed to yeah. a record label. I was thrown into the deep end of the music industry, which was actually great. It was not the easiest, but it was great. Um, my coach was Will I Am, and he took me completely um, under his wing, and we went to LA, and we made a record, and you know, I went on tour with him, I went on tour with Jesse J, I had this amazing experience. And then you realize that obviously there's politics in every industry and it happens a lot to artists where you know the, the record wasn't going to get released because you have to get yeses from a lot of people. Mm. And um, you know it, it got shelved and it didn't get released. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, I'd obviously put my heart and soul into a lot of those mm. songs, so I mourned them more than any ex-boyfriend. But um, Ooh, yeah, so. yeah, God, yeah, <laughs> right. So the politics of things. Yeah. Your first album did it leave you a little frustrated, or angry with the music scene? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, can't, I remember tweeting once saying I didn't realize to be a musician you had to be a great politician. There's a lot of like, goodness, am I doing the right thing? Like, am I strong enough for this industry? You know, you just had to learn. Right, okay. Goodness, I have to wait out these contracts now. And actually, Pete, um, who the studio was in, he was performing with us today. I was like, no one is gonna want to touch my project. Like, I am beaten. And he was literally like, no, I want to. I love your voice. I don't know if fame's your goal. I don't aspire to be famous. I think you have to love music. In my experiences as a child, you realize that there are other people have their own motivations yeah. around you. Yeah. And that's kind of a scary feeling. It isn't is it? scary. It's hard to get people around you that are totally okay with the fact that, you know, for a while at least, you're probably not going to make any money. Basically, we just started writing together and we came up with this sound that I can only describe as like, really percussive, like, left R&B. That song, I, you know, that I performed Wolf Den, their first single, it's actually about the music industry, and it's mm -hmm. like, I'm surrounded by wolves, you know, the wolves are at my side, but I know their teeth can't bite, so when I'm beaten, I'm gonna keep singing Sweet Faith. <laughs> When the wolves say, go home, go home, 
mind So when the wolves say go home, go home Out there to stay right here And silence fear in the darkness I'll keep singing that Sweet